Outside the blizzard buries the world. Wind screams through the night. The ground is frozen solid. Yet inside a Viking longhouse, men slept on hot stone beds warm as if wrapped in an electric blanket. Sounds impossible, doesn't it? No gas, no grid, no modern heaters yet. They outlasted winters that would break most of us today. The real question is how? And what happens to us if the power goes out for just a few days in a storm like this? In the next few minutes, I'll take you from Icelandic excavations to native tippies, uncovering the secret of the hot stone bed, an ancient heat hack. You can still try in a survival drill or your off-grid cabin. 9th to 11th century, the Vikings push west, settling Iceland, even Greenland. Winters there weren't just cold, they were endless. The sagas tell of nights so long you'd swear the sun had died. And when archaeologists dug under the floors of longhouses in Iceland, they found fire pits lined with cracked basalt, stones that had been roasted over and over until they split. Proof the ancients had a system stone, beds holding heat like a battery. Now swing across the ocean, the plains tribes, teepees standing against howling winds. Lewis and Clark wrote of nights where warriors wrapped themselves in hides and heated rocks tucked inside gave off warmth till dawn. Old tricks, time-tested hacks. If you've ever shivered in a nylon tent in January, you understand. They weren't just surviving. They built thermal systems out of dirt and stone. And here's the payoff. Those systems still work off-grid today. So how did these hot stone beds actually work? The principle is simple, but brutal. Heat the stones until they're glowing. Let them drink in that fire until the surface feels harder than steel and the air around them shimmers. Then bury them under earth or lay them beneath the sleeping bench. Through the night, those stones bleed warmth, slow and steady into the room. Not a flash of heat, a constant pulse like a heartbeat in the ground. Archaeology backs it up. In some Icelandic excavations, fire pits still hold the ghosts of basalt. Blackened, cracked, shattered. Stones split from years of being roasted and cooled. That's proof. This wasn't chance. It was a system, a time-tested hack. Stone as the battery pack of the ancients. And here's where we call back. If you've ever shivered in a nylon tent, teeth rattling while the wind howled, Imagine having a floor that radiates heat into your bones. That's what they had. A dirt and stone heating grid centuries before we thought of radiant floors. Now let's talk safety. Many of you guys in the comments already know this. And I'll repeat it because it matters. Never throw wet river rock into the fire. The water trapped inside expands like steam in a pressure cooker. That stone can blow apart like a hand grenade right in your shelter. I've heard it. I've seen shards fly. The old folks weren't fools. They chose volcanic rock, basalt, granite, dense, dry, tough as iron. They knew what worked and what could kill. That's the wisdom passed down. And that's where the modern survival payoff comes in. If you want to feel what the Vikings and the Plains tribes felt, you don't need a longhouse. You don't need a tippy. Try this dig a small pit in your backyard. Build a fire. Heat up dry stones, safe ones. Bury them under a thin layer of soil. Then sit near it as the night cools down. You'll feel that slow release of warmth creep up your legs and into your spine. It's not theory. It's a drill. A practice run for a power outage or a bug out night off grid. And when you feel it, you'll understand why those stones show up again and again in the archaeology. They weren't just rocks. They were survival tech, old tricks, ancient wisdom, still ready for us to use. Picture a Viking longhouse. Walls of timber, a roof heavy with sod, dirt packed down to make the floor. From the outside, it looked like a mound in the snow, a bunker against the wind. Step inside and you'd find the heart of their survival, a long fire pit carved into the middle of the floor. Archaeologists uncovered these trenches, sometimes 10, 15 feet long, lined with stones, blackened and cracked. Those weren't just campfires. That was a heat reservoir, a living furnace running the length of the house. The sagas back it up. They describe nights where families and warriors slept shoulder to shoulder circling the central fire. 
Imagine it, the storm clawing at the walls, the wind screaming through the gaps, and yet a steady wave of heat rolling out from that pit, warming bones, drying clothes, keeping children alive till dawn. If you've ever shivered in a thin-walled tent with your teeth clattering, you know exactly why they built it this way. Think about the scale. Not just a single stone, not a hand warmer. Whole rows of heated rock soaking in fire by day, bleeding warmth by night. Stone as fuel tanks stacked beneath their feet. A primitive radiant floor centuries before engineers gave it a name. That's the genius hidden in the dirt. And here's the mini payoff for us. You don't need a Viking house to test this. Try it in your backyard. Dig a narrow pit. Line it with dry stones, basalt, granite safe ones. Build a fire until the rocks glow. Then shovel dirt over the top. As the night cools, sit beside it. You'll feel that heat seep out, creeping into your boots, crawling up your spine. It's not theory. It's a drill. A taste of the same ancient trick that kept longhouses alive in winters that would break most of us today. Old tricks. Ancient wisdom. Still waiting for anyone off-grid, anyone prepping, anyone curious enough to test it. And, once you feel that steady warmth radiating from the ground, you'll understand what the sagas meant when they said the fire never died. Now let's leave the timber halls of the Vikings and step on to the frozen plains of North America. There, the teepee rose against the wind, a frame of tall poles wrapped tight with buffalo hide. At the very top, a smoke hole because a fire was always burning inside. Simple, portable, strong enough to stand against a blizzard that cut like a knife. European travelers of the 18th and 19th centuries, men like Lewis and Clark, wrote it down. They saw warriors crawl into bedrolls with stones heated in the fire, not tossed in raw. No, those stones were wrapped in hides tucked in close. Stone warmers, they called them. Primitive hot water bottles. And they worked. The heat bled through the hide, lasting for hours, keeping the chill from gnawing into bone. Think about it. Survival gear made from nothing but rock and hide. Lightweight. Mobile. If you moved camp tomorrow, you took the poles, the skins, and the trick went with you. That was the beauty of the teepee system. Portable architecture. Portable heat. And here's the callback. If you've ever lain awake in a nylon tent, teeth chattering, listening to the wind claw at the fabric, imagine pulling a heated stone from the fire pit, wrapping it in a blanket, and sliding it under your bedding. That slow, steady warmth creeping up your legs. That's the difference between suffering through the night and actually sleeping. Same warning here, though. Don't throw wet river stones in the fire. More than one of you has reminded me, and you're right. They can explode like a grenade, sharp shards flying. The old tribes knew. They picked the right kind of stone. Dense. Dry. The kind that holds heat without blowing apart. So, what's the mini payoff for us today? Try this heat-dry stones in a backyard pit. Once they're blazing hot, drop them carefully into a Dutch oven or heavy cast iron pot. Seal the lid. Carry it into your tent. Now you've got a safe stone warmer. No sparks, no smoke, but hours of heat. It's an old trick tested for centuries. Stone the battery pack of the ancients. Whether in a Viking longhouse or a plains teepee, the principle was the same. Fire by day, stored heat by night. A survival hack we can still use off-grid right now. So what do we take from all this? The lesson is sharp and simple. Heat storage means fuel savings. The Vikings knew it. The Plains tribes knew it. Burn your wood once store that heat in stone and let it bleed back slowly through the night. That's free energy. No wasted fuel. No waking up every two hours to stoke the fire. And the materials cheap. Durable. Always around you. You don't need propane tanks or fancy gadgets, just the right rocks. Archaeology shows us what worked volcanic stone basalt granite. Dense, heavy, tough as iron. Those stones could be heated again and again, splitting only after years of service. That's why we keep finding them cracked and black under longhouse floors. But here's the wisdom echoed by our own community. Don't get careless. A sandstone block, a wet river rock, it's a trap. Heat it and the moisture inside expands like a shell ready to blow. I've heard the pop. 
I've seen shards fly across camp like shrapnel. And many of you have reminded me in the comments, never throw damp river stones in the fire. You're right. It's not just risky, it's lethal. Call back here if you've ever spent a night in a nylon tent shaking with cold. You already know the value of a steady heat source. Stones gave that gift. A floor that radiates. A bundle that warms your core till morning. Not luxury. Survival. So what's the mini payoff? Think of stone as the fuel tank of the Middle Ages. When wood was scarce, when the winds cut through hides and planks, stone became their battery pack. Fire by day, stored heat by night. And that principle is still rock solid, pun intended, when the grid goes down today. Imagine the powers out in January. No furnace, no kerosene heater. But you've got a backyard pit dry stones and a shovel. You can build a reservoir of warmth enough to keep you through the night. That's not just history. That's a bug out drill, a prepping skill, a piece of old world engineering ready for off grid life right now. Old tricks, ancient wisdom, time tested hacks. Stones don't lie. They stored heat for our ancestors and they'll do the same for us when we need it most. From the fire pits in Iceland to the snow camps of Montana across oceans and centuries, the ancestors trusted the heat of stone. Think about that for a second. Different worlds, different tools, same principle. Burn once, store the fire, let the rock bleed it back into the night. That's what kept families alive, what kept warriors strong enough to face another day. If you've ever lain in a tent in January, shaking so hard your teeth clattered, then you understand. You don't forget that kind of cold, the kind that gnaws at your bones, makes your breath sting, makes your fingers feel like wood. The old ones didn't just endure it, they hacked it. They turned stone into fuel tanks, primitive but effective. Stone became the battery pack of the ancients. But here's the thing. This isn't just history. This isn't just archaeology. It's survival knowledge waiting in plain sight. If you ever lose power in a storm, if you find yourself off-grid longer than you planned, you can reach for the same trick. A pit. A fire. The right stones. Granite. Basalt. Never sandstone. Never damp river rock. More than one of you has reminded me, and you're right. A wet rock can pop like a grenade shards flying like shrapnel across camp. It's no joke. Respect the wisdom. Use the right stones. Let them dry. If you want to try this yourself, do it safe. Dig a pit. Heat the right rocks. Cover them with earth. Or drop them into a Dutch oven and carry that heat into your tent. Feel what our ancestors felt. The slow wave of warmth crawling up your spine while the wind claws at the world outside. That's not luxury. That's survival. That's proof of an old trick archaeology has now confirmed. So I'll leave you with this challenge. Don't just watch. Try it. Because once you feel that living warmth rise out of the ground, you'll never look at a rock the same way again. And now I want to hear from you. Have you ever used the hot stone hack in your own camping trips? Your survival drills, your off-grid experiments? Drop your story below. Share the lessons. Because this isn't just my campfire. It's ours. And around this fire, every story matters.